Hello everyone and welcome back to Dragalia Foundry, a fan channel where everything Dragalia Lost can be found. In today's video, we're going to be checking out the Omega difficulties in the Time War and Torment raid. I'm going to play through Omega Solo, Omega Level 1, and Omega Level 2. And for Omega Levels 1 and 2, we're going to do that in public lobbies and kind of get a sense for what the experience is like. We're going to go until we get Deathless Clears on both of those, so hopefully it's not too bad. As you can see, I just unlocked all of the Omega Keys. I had been playing this raid at a very slow pace, hadn't played a lot during the week, so I kind of caught up yesterday, got my golden, uh, golden emblems up so I could get my last key, and now on Saturday I actually can enjoy the raid, check out the Omega difficulty, it's around today, and then it's going to come back toward the end of the raid. So let's start with Omega Solo, and while we play this, I'll talk a little bit about my team. So I'm leading Wukong here, and I definitely think he's the absolute best unit you can put on your team for this. He's a welfare unit, but the great thing about him is that you can power him up to 50 nodes for free by playing the event and obtaining those Wukong Conviction items. So I strongly recommend you do that. He has damage bonuses in the raid, he has damage mitigation as well, and his skills charge up pretty fast, meaning they're good at providing iframes that can shield your entire team. I've equipped him with two shared skills, one from Ronzel and one from Corin, mostly just for extra damage since I do think those get to benefit nicely from uh, his inherent damage boost against the raid boss. So that's kind of my setup here for my lead unit, and that's the unit I think you should always take with you. My other three units are Gala Yudin for an emergency Cupid heal if I needed it, plus his buff zone. Dragon Yule Malara for her debuff, which is 15% to defense on the raid boss, which stacks really nicely when you're talking about 16 adventurers. And then I have Peony in the back, mostly for her light damage co-ability, but also she's just a really strong unit. Now, because uh, Kayan was an easier Agito battle, and I'm able to auto battle that one, I did grind up a lot of shadow weapons, and one of the first High Dragons I was able to complete after that, as a result, was High Jupiter, with it being light element. So I do have all of the tier 2 High Dragon light weapons, and that's what I'm using on my characters here. If you don't have those, they're not too bad to get if you don't find Kayan particularly difficult. Um, then by beating Kayan, you can get the weapons you need to get them. And I showed off some solo play of Expert High Jupiter in a solo video a while back. But unlike my Omega team for Fragonoth with water, in water, most of my tier 2 High Dragon weapons are Max Unbound. In light, they're not Max Unbound. Only my dagger is, which happened to work out great for Wukong. The reason it was Max Unbound is because I used to play Meet Tsuhide and uh, I really like using her, but I'm actually benching her here in favor of Wukong just because of how powerful he is in this. So, first look at Omega. Let's see. Um, okay, we can't attack him. Looks like if you don't destroy those weak points, he's going to rain down Meteors and you can't attack him during that. But the Meteors didn't seem that bad or that hard to dodge there, so that wasn't too bad for us. Let's continue attacking, set up some buff zones, which he immediately dashed out of. I'm trying to focus on the tail as much as possible here and save skills for his attacks, but uh, with this being my first time seeing this, I don't know exactly when his attacks are going to happen, so I'm more inclined to cast them on cooldown than to just save them. We're able to do our nice Ronsel into current combo there, and I save my second skill to kind of help with these reds that are coming down. Those red meteors that happen quickly are kind of hard to read on the screen. Like, it's just a lot of information happening at once. So that was somewhat hard for me on the easier difficulties of this, but looks like Omega Level 1 wasn't too bad, despite some struggles that Player 1 may have had there. We are able to clear that pretty handedly, and as you may know, Omega Level 1 is where the really good rewards stop. Omega Level 2 is more just for the challenge, and you do get some honeys and some more it might off of it but uh, it's more as an incentive so that more veteran players have something fun to do than it is something that you should feel obligated or like you need to clear. So we're able to do Omega Solo and Omega Level 1 relatively easily. Let's check out Omega 2, but before we do, let's check on our event perks. I want to say, I don't think that we have all of the raid boosts. We'll collect our endeavors first. You can see that we're going to get the epithet from Omega Level 1. But um, I do think, as a courtesy to my fellow players, 
It would be wrong of me to go into a Mega Level 2 without all of the event perks I can have, meaning all of the raid boosts. But I haven't played the raid that much, so let's see. Yep, we're missing some damage. So what we're going to do real quick is uh, I'll go into the boss battle, use my stamina, and then I might use that EX crystal we just got and uh, do that really quick. Basically, I think that the attitude to have for this content, Omega 2 in particular, less so Omega 1, is that you want to put your best foot forward, right? So I don't want to go into this doing less damage than I could and uh, hampering my team's possible success as a result. So uh, let's see how much more we need. Okay, so we're pretty much there. So let's do this EX real quick, and then we'll get into Omega level two. Hopefully it's not too hard in public lobbies. I'm using a pure light team here, but if you're lacking some of these stronger limited time light adventurers, then uh, another way that you could go about things is certainly to use the shadow element. So I wouldn't count that out by any means. It's a really strong element. But uh, I have the light adventures I want to use, so that's why I'm going with them. Other ones that I think could be great for this are Radiant Shuan Song, maybe Zubajie, although I'm not sure in Omega 2 how much of a risk his low HP centered kit will end up being. But uh, I think in principle he could be quite good. But uh, anyone who provides debuffs also could be good, so Xiao Wu Jing is another one that probably looks quite, quite nice on this. So I switched to my weaker team here that I was using for most of the event, leading with Albert. Albert probably is also good. Uh, I switched to this team because it has Yudin in the back line for player EXP. But um, usually for the really hard content, like Omega and above, I don't really make it a priority to include Yudin or player EXP. These are mostly one and done type clears anyway, and I think I'm going to need all the power I can get. Okay, so we have all the raid boosts, we have all the power we can get. Let's start by doing quick play and um, just see what we end up getting. And uh, if nothing else, maybe this will be a learning experience about the battle. Looks like we've come into a team with a 50k might limit here. And um, interestingly, the lead here does not have 50k might, so that's kind of odd. But I wonder why they're asking for 50k might if they don't have it. Let's check out... Normally I don't like to check out other players' teams in regular co-op, but for the sake of this video I think it's worth looking at these, kind of seeing what's going on. So they have a tier 2 weapon. Kind of odd that they would put Unicorn on Galaluca and High Jupiter on Hildegard. So that does not bode super well in my opinion. Um, I think you would want the damage or the strength on Galaluca. He's also a melee, so he doesn't need HP as much. Now this team looks more like what I'd expect at this difficulty level. Really nice weapon selection as well. So, uh, oh, okay, we actually got somebody. I was going to say 50k might have been too high, but it uh, looks like we got somebody. Now, will we actually start the raid? <laughs> we'll throw this up. And player four is here, player two is here. So player one, are you reading? Um, try ready up again, I guess. We might have to switch out. Oh, okay, there we go. All right, let's see how this goes. Blind run. Uh, we saw Omega level one. I would imagine the patterns are kind of similar. The weak points are kind of hard to aggro down, but the meteor attack doesn't seem too bad to just walk around and dodge if you fail to stop the weak points. Okay, we're starting off with this. So, um... Rolling really helps with this, I, fe I find. Uh, let's see, we got some weak points. So I'm on this one. I think we can take it down, but yeah, everybody's on the other ones. All right, we didn't take them down. They're kind of tanky. We didn't take that bottom one down. What happened? Okay, that was fine. Just dodge. Trying to go roughly near the tail. Now we have this move, which you can roll, but... Uh, AI are a little bit susceptible, I feel, if you're rolling. Skilled early there. So it looks like the dash happening after that is kind of similar. And then the circle attack. This looks pretty similar to what we've seen before. In the easier difficulty, then he does a charge. Now we have our nice Ronzel Curran setup. This weak point, let's try aggro it down. I don't have a lot of skill save for this. Back when Chu Tian Da Shang came out, 
Like, it was hard enough that people actually did save skills. Oh, okay, this is Neo. Okay, so maybe that version of the weak point, you have to, uh, you have to target, or like you have to run away because he does a purple. So that's good to know. If you can't get all three of those down in time, run away. Now we have more meteors shooting dark stars, but these are coming out faster. So this is a little bit harder to dodge, just kind of spamming roll here. And basically with my dragons, I do think Daiko Kutsun is best to create a buff zone, but I'm not going to be so greedy as to not use my Cupid for healing if uh, I feel like we really need it. I think uh, Gala Yuta need it there. His chain co ability also means he's going to get some regen off of this transformation. But I do think creating buff zones is generally better than Cupid's. Cupid's only applies to your own team. But with that being the only source of healing on my team, I wanted to do that. Our damage looks fine here. So um, I think we're okay. Oh, I see. Oh no, player one and player two had a bad day. Man, that's kind of rough. Uh, all right, so let's see what happens to Peony. Peony's our last survivor. I think we might be able to pull this off, but if she dies, let's just try again. I mean, maybe we can't pull it off. <laughs> All right, I have a feeling that she's not going to be long for this world. So uh, let's see if she survives, and if not, we'll try a different lobby and see what that's like. So um, I'm not sure what got them, actually. Maybe it was some of the purple attacks or something like that. I mean, the tail's almost down, so maybe we can do this. Now we have two weak units, and uh, my teammates had some Hildegards, but I don't. All right, there we have it. Peony bit the bullet and Dragon Yule Malara looked not far behind, but our damage seemed really okay to clear. So um, let's try again. Let's see who we get this time. We'll do quick play once again. That's kind of my go-to. Um, sometimes I'll look for might gated rooms if... Um, I, I mean, there's not a direct correlation between might and player skill. And again, let's check out what uh, everybody's working with just for the video. This looks good. All the dragons seem in the right place. This is a slightly weaker group than last as far as might, but uh, I'm liking the builds I'm seeing here. Everything seems reasonably allocated, which was not necessarily the case last time. So uh, let's see how we do. It felt like we, we got uh, Meiho Wong's HP down really fast last time. So hopefully this works out. Oh, nice. We get the intro video as well. I don't think we got that before. Omega Raid, Meho Wong. I really am proud of this raid boss because uh, I was worried it might be a reskin of Chi Tan Da Sheng, and it's honestly not. Like, it feels very, very distinct, and I appreciate that about it. There's not even any, like, Da Sheng minis going around, which were very adorable, but uh, it does feel very distinct to me. And that's quite different than, like, let's say, Valfair and Sabnak. All right, kind of messed up there. I was trying to go outward because I thought the weak points were going to be the uh, outward variety, but we know that this might spawn a purple. So let's let's back up. Hope my team backed up. Everybody looks healthy, so that's good. Now let's uh, pile on the damage again. We kind of know what to expect here. It's going to be a red circle, and then he should dash. But I went ahead and used my skill. Let's roll through. Oh, he dashed that way. Everybody's fine except for Dragon Yule Malara. Now he's going to do this red circle. We rolled through again. You can see why rolling as iframe is not always as desirable. Obviously, Dragon Yule Malar is taking some punishment that could have been avoided had I been more conservative with casting my skills not on cooldown, but using them for iframes instead. It's a little sad to use the uh, current skill on some of those, but... Uh, Alright, we weren't able to even get them anyway. Yeah, we're not really getting those in time in any of these battles, but it seems like it's generally not really mattering, which is okay. Okay, this move, Ground Splitter, we're able to retreat. AI, we're able to retreat safely, so that's good. I could see that being a potentially punishing move. And now we have these red meteors that fill up fast, so having our two skills there was pretty nice. All right, another one of these, we may or may not be able to break it here might have been a little aggressive for me to transform because if we don't break it it's kind of like i just wasted this attack rate zone yeah and that's exactly what happened kind of wasted an attack rate zone when we couldn't even hit the boss so 
probably should not have actually transformed there, knowing that our team wasn't quite able to push through those two times in a row already. Shooting Dark Stars again. Comes out pretty fast, trying to roll through, cast skills. Ooh, Ground Splitter. Right afterward, too. I can see that tripping up people. Yo, okay. Have not seen this. Encroaching Darkness. I guess we saw it a little bit last time, right? Wasn't really paying attention. I think that's when we had messages on the screen. Oh, I like this. This is kind of like Resentment. Yeah, and um, this is kind of like Wolf's Wrath Resentment with the air lines coming through. This looks so cool. Just like what's going on here. And, and now the Meteors, because we failed to get through that. How much damage do you need to get through that? I mean... Is it basically just a matter of saving skills? It might honestly be that simple. Nope. Probably shouldn't have used Curran there. Probably should have waited for Ronzel. But I see that tail. I want to break that tail. It's so low. Can we demolish? Come on. Nice. Got the demolish. Break is obviously happening soon. I was kind of worried about our team's DPS at first, but um, now we actually look like we're in really good shape. So we Tornado Bash. We have the Broke. Gosh, just that Tornado Bash does so much damage, even without the current combo. And now that it's break, I use my Dragon made to buff zone. And kind of just sitting through these with my Dragon protecting me. But I will do one roll there at the end. Let's see, will we have any luck this time finally breaking one of these weak points? Come on. Yes! We actually did it, and at good time too, because we're at the end of the fight, everybody's healthy. Last thing we'd want is somebody to die to that purple. There, nice skill iframe. Jumped in with Curran. And now, I think we got it, y'all. Let's see. Yes, and everybody got Deathless. That was great. Great teammates. I'm glad I, I found them. Good job with your builds. Good job with, uh, you know, communication. We didn't really have to use stickers too much in this raid. So I definitely think the patterns are easier than Fragonoth. The Volcano phase alone and the Tailspin makes Fragonoth hard. I think this is probably easier. I was expecting it to potentially be harder, but nevertheless, very satisfying, very interesting. Um, I'm kind of glad that the weak point destroying thing was not too punishing. Had that been more punishing, this could have been a very different experience for us because we failed to meet that DPS check many times. But uh, yeah, we just got our honey, we got our wormite. That's really all there is to it as far as Omega 2. So we cleared it once and we're good for the raid. Probably be around the Discord uh, to help other players clear as they try to take it on. But uh, don't feel pressured like you have to do this. Omega 1 is definitely worth it. Omega Solo is definitely worth it. Omega 2, if you can do it, it's great. And if you enjoy the challenge, it's great. But otherwise, if it's not for you, that's totally fine. And I think they've designed it in such a way that it's satisfying without uh, creating that pressure that players feel from uh, fear of missing out. So uh, there's our progress. That's how much left we have to do in the raid. Not completely done, but we've made a lot of progress so far. Here's my team for those wondering about it. It's pretty well built out, except the weapons are not all max. Other than Wukong's, they are not max. They're zero unbound. Let's equip our epithet. No epithet for Omega 2, but we do have our nice Omega 1 epithet. So let's see if we can find it and put it on. And that is pretty much going to do it for this video, everyone. So I hope you enjoyed this look at the Omega difficulties of the new content. Had a lot of fun putting this together and getting back to some gameplay in Dragalia Lost. More videos to come. So thank you as always for watching. Take care and I'll see you next time.